This uh, presentation is about our proposal on how rapidly can groundwater quality be improved. Proposal 046-B. Project team is John, myself, John Niebuhr, David Muller, Joe Magner, Bradley Hansen, all from the University of Minnesota, Anthony Runkles from the Minnesota Geological Survey, and Robert Tipping from the Minnesota Geological Survey, and Kevin Keener from the Minnesota Department of Agriculture, and Perry Jones from the USGS. Today we have Heidi Peterson from the MDA here uh, to stand in for Kevin Keener, who could not be here. So, <clears throat> question is, you know, issue is, why do we have, uh, issue is that we have high nitrate concentrations in groundwater in certain parts of the state of Minnesota. And one might question why that is. The common knowledge is that, of course, that since World War II, use of chemicals uh, certainly increased greatly, both in industry and manufacturing and in uh, agricultural production. And because of the way in which these chemicals were used, sometimes they were not, many times they were not used very efficiently, and uh, these fractions of uh, the amount that was used have, have been lost and leased to uh, groundwater aquifers as a result, both surface water and to groundwater aquifers. And when the contaminants get into the groundwater, they become stored there. And in general, over time, the, because of relatively inefficiency of use of these chemicals, um, the inflow of these chemicals to groundwater aquifers has been greater than the outflow from the aquifers. So obviously there's been increased storage of the chemicals and that means that there's been an increase in concentration over time. As a result of the Clean Water Act of 1972, there have been conscious efforts to reverse these trends in chemicals and especially in the last two decades there's been strong uh, attempts to improve groundwater resources. Prior to that, a lot of the efforts were in improving uh, point sources from industry and from municipalities. Now there's been more effort to improve the efficiency of chemical use in uh, non-point, uh, in land use practices, which contribute in general to um, non-point sources of uh, pollution. While loading rates to groundwater can be, because of all the efforts that have gone on, different methods for reducing chemical loss, improving efficiency of chemical use, called best management practices, these do exist. They've been tested. They know that we know that they work, at least at the local scale. Uh, but even with those practices, there's still this legacy of uh, chemicals that are stored in uh, uh, both shallow and deep aquifers legacy of those stored from past practices. It took basically decades for these chemicals to be built up and it may take decades for them to be reduced to acceptable levels. Our project is intended to try to determine what the time scale is for which those chemical concentrations will be reduced to those acceptable levels. And our project will focus on uh, nitrates as the chemical um, of concern and we'll focus on the southeastern part of the state where we see some of the largest concentrations of nitrate in both shallow and deep groundwater aquifers. This map shows the locations of uh, monitoring of wells where <clears throat> samples of water have been drawn that have shown uh, detectable levels of nitrate in the groundwater. Also illustrates uh, locations of springs where nitrate has been detected in the spring discharge as well as uh, <coughs> locations of streams where nitrate has been detected at significant levels in those uh, streams. So we can see here that in the southeast which is dominated by a uh, karst type of uh, geology that is uh, solution channel uh, carbonate uh, geology. 
that there's a great deal of uh, nitrate contamination of both shallow and deep aquifers. So basically here we're covering uh, seven or eight counties uh, and some of the counties are partially covered. For instance, Rice County is only partially, Dodge County is only partially covered uh, with this. So why are we concerned about nitrates and groundwater? Well, partially because, uh, of course, historically, back to the uh, 1950s, there was concern about uh, high concentration of nitrate in groundwater, uh, which led to what they call the blue baby syndrome, methyl, methemoglobinium, uh, <clears throat> where the concentration was uh, considered to be greater than 10 parts per million as being the uh, threshold above which this would become a problem. Uh, but there's also have been studies done in more recent years that do show a possible synergy between uh, nitrate and other uh, contaminants that are present in groundwater, possibly pesticides, where these can then lead to some carcinogenic effect. And in addition to this, nitrates in groundwater poses a potential long-term source of nitrate exports to streams and lakes, and of course there's a negative impact of nitrogen uh, in streams if it's at a high enough concentration on both fish and macroinvertebrates in streams. And there's the Gulf Coast uh, hypoxia issue as well, where the limiting nutrient causing hypoxia in the Gulf of Mexico is nitrate. Now, if we look at the trends in nitrate concentration uh, in the southeastern part of the state, in southeast Minnesota, nitrate concentrations have been showing a decrease in the shallow aquifers. And this may be uh, attributed possibly to the implementation of uh, best management practices, lower use of uh, fertilizers in the southeastern part of the state. Um, this uh, trend line is uh, based on samples from uh, three uh, locations in the southeastern part of the state. So it's not uh, perfectly representative of the entire uh, region, but does show that there is a relatively, uh, a fairly rapid decrease in the concentration. So there may, this may offer some hope. But even so, we're talking about a, a decrease in concentration over a 12-year period, which brings it down approximately to the drinking water standard. Still more needs to be done in the southeast. And it's not totally clear, clear whether this decrease is uh, just due to best management practices, more efficient use of uh, chemical fertilizers, or whether it might actually be a result of increases in precipitation which occurred over the same period of time causing a dilution effect in the aquifer. The uh, other aspect here is that the deeper aquifers are actually showing a in slow increase in the concentration of uh, nitrate as you can see by the yellow line here. This is based on sampling from eight different locations in the southeast and uh, a, a very important aspect here is that uh, these deeper aquifers are the main source for potable water uh, in most of Minnesota and uh, <coughs> also in the southeastern part of the state. The shallow aquifers are not used for uh, drinking water in the southeast. It's not possible to get a permit to use shallow aquifer water for uh, uh, drinking water because of the poor quality of the water in the susceptibility to a number of different contaminants, including uh, bacteria and viruses. So it's not clear yet uh, uh, about this trend, whether this trend is onerous, that it might be showing that uh, in the long term there may be a uh, very high concentration of uh, nitrate in the deeper aquifers. Just to uh, illustrate the mechanism by which this uh, might be occurring, we can look at a cross-section of the aquifers in the southeast. Um, this uh, cross-section shows the shallow aquifers, such as the Galena aquifer, compared to aquifers like the uh, Jordan or the Prairie du Chien aquifers. These uh, shallow aquifers are going to be closest to any change that 
occurs at the land surface and any change in land surface if we were to decrease the nitrate load due to <coughs> inefficient or to improve the efficiency of uh, chemical use those aquifers would of course show up the effect um, much more rapidly because water flows the, through these uh, aquifers much quicker and uh, the lifetime for water to flow through these aquifers is much shorter. You expect, expect then that chemicals in that water will end up uh, at streams in the area much more quickly. In contrast, uh, chemicals that move vertically downward from the shallow aquifers into the deeper aquifers that water uh, has a much longer travel time passing through those deeper aquifers and it takes a much longer period of time for those chemicals then to be ejected or to be flushed out of those uh, deeper aquifers into uh, surface streams through uh, springs or through uh, seepage up through the uh, channel bottom. As a result, then, we might expect that the deeper aquifers would hold on to those chemicals much more, uh, much longer and would take much longer for those chemicals to be flushed out of the aquifers. <coughs> um, so, uh, because of the fact that uh, these chemicals move, through the shallow aquifers, then to the deeper aquifers. Deeper aquifers are going to see the effect of land use changes much later than the shallow aquifers would. They would, they would feel it much later. As a result, then, uh, what's going on in those deeper aquifers right now, would, what would they would be feeling, let's say, would be the effect from uh, decades ago. And it may take decades from now before they would actually see the benefit of the reduced chemical loading of, uh, that might be going on today. As a result then, of course, we would expect that the water coming out of those aquifers will not uh, become uh, significantly cleaner for decades from now. So uh, project goal is to uh, estimate the time required for groundwater flow to, to get at this issue of uh, travel time. How long does it take for different aquifers to become clean, or not perfectly clean, but get down uh, clean to an acceptable level. Uh, we need to know how long it takes for water to uh, travel through those aquifers. So um, one of the uh, project goals is to estimate, uh, de develop new estimates of the time required for groundwater to travel through both the shallow and deep aquifers. Uh, here we'd want to more precisely age date groundwater in shallow and deep aquifers and by that precision I mean that we want to be able to break down the ages into decades, uh, increments of decades as opposed to increments of uh, century. Um, <clears throat> here we would uh, quantify travel time using maps of shallow and groundwater uh, flow. And for that, we would use the MGS County Atlas maps, which there's been a great deal of money spent on uh, developing those maps. These maps will be absolutely essential to any analysis that we do within this project. Okay. All right.